Good morning. We have already discussed the equations for rotational inertia of common shapes. However, we should also know how to measure the rotational inertia of irregular shapes. The rotational inertia demonstrator from Arbor Scientific is a pulley. However, because it has three different pulley sizes, it does not fit any of the standard shapes. Flippin' physics. Our goal is to create a graph where the slope of the best fit line is the rotational inertia of the rotational inertia demonstrator. Our setup has an adjustable mass and a force sensor hanging over one side of the pulley. Let's start with the free body diagrams. Bo, please draw the free body diagrams of all the forces acting on the pulley and the hanging mass. Sure. On the pulley, there is a force of gravity acting down at its center, and a force normal also acting at its center, only up, and a force of tension acting down where the string is. If we follow the string down to the hanging mass, there's an equal magnitude force of tension acting upward on the hanging mass where the string is, and a force of gravity of the hanging mass acting down on the hanging mass. Mr. P, does the mass of the hanging mass include the force sensor? Yes, the hanging mass includes the force sensor and the mass which is hanging from it. Billy, remembering that our goal is to create a graph with the slope of the best fit line equal to the rotational inertia of the pulley, what should we do next? Well, because net torque equals rotational inertia times angular acceleration, I think we should sum the torques on the pulley. So the net torque on the pulley with the axis of rotation at the center of the pulley, or the axle, equals, uh, well, uh, let's define the positive direction as counterclockwise, or out of the board, because that is the direction the pulley will rotate. Uh, both the force normal and the force of gravity, which act on the pulley, act right on the axis of rotation, so they will not cause any torque on the pulley. So the only force which causes a torque on the pulley is the force of tension, which we will measure with the force tensor. And it will cause the pulley to rotate counterclockwise or out of the board, so that torque is positive. And net torque equals rotational inertia times angular acceleration. Uh, torque equals the R value times force times the sine of the angle between those two vectors, which equals the radius of the wheel times the force of tension times the sine of 90 degrees, and the sine of 90 degrees equals 1. Um, Remember, the slope-intercept form of a line is y equals slope times x plus the y-intercept. Oh, right. Uh, so uh, then on the y-axis, we need to have the radius times the force of tension, and the slope equals the rotational inertia. Uh, and on the x-axis, we need to have the angular acceleration of the pulley, and the y-intercept equals zero. Great. Now let's collect some data. The pulley has three different radii. The smallest is 0 0.0202 meters, the one in the middle is 0 0.0286 meters, and the largest is 0 0.0385 meters. Our first trial has a hanging mass of 0 0.103 kilograms, is on the smallest pulley, and looks like this. From the force sensor, we get the average force of tension for this trial while the system is accelerating to be 0 0.955 newtons. Now, this force of tension we measured acts on the hanging mass. However, because the force of tension acting on the pulley acts on the other side of the same string, we know those two forces of tension are equal in magnitude. We also know the pulley radius is the smallest one, which is 0 0.0202 meters. But the angular acceleration needs to be calculated using the uniformly angularly accelerated motion equations. U fishy M. <laughs> yes, U fishy M. Okay, for every trial, we know the initial angular velocity equals zero. And for every trial, we can measure the change in time for a change in theta of the pulley of two revolutions, or four pi radians. For this first trial, it takes 55 frames for the pulley to rotate through two revolutions, which at 60 frames per second is 0.916 repeating seconds. Bobby, please determine the angular acceleration of the pulley from that information. We can use the uniformly angularly accelerated motion equation, angular displacement equals initial angular velocity times change in time plus one half times angular acceleration times change in time squared. The initial angular velocity equals zero, so that term cancels out. Uh, multiply both sides by two, and divide both sides by change in time squared, 
and angular acceleration equals two times angular displacement divided by change in time squared, or two times four pi all divided by 0 0.916 repeating squared, uh, which equals 29.910 radians per second squared. Very nice. Now we can perform this with four different hanging masses and three different radii for a total of 12 trials. Remember, we are plotting angular acceleration on the x-axis and pulley radius times force of tension on the y-axis. So we need to add pulley radius times force of tension to our data table. And we can plot all of that data on our graph and add our best fit line, which has an equation of y equals 0.00067x, or pulley radius times force of tension equals 0.00067 times angular acceleration. Therefore, because we know radius times force of tension equals rotational inertia times angular acceleration, the rotational inertia of the rotational inertia demonstrator equals 0.00067 kilograms times meters squared. Bo, please confirm that the units for the slope of our best fit line work out to be kilograms times meters squared. Well, from our equation, we know the slope of the line equals rotational inertia, which equals the radius of the pulley times tension force all divided by angular acceleration. The units then are meters times newtons divided by radians per second squared. A newton is a kilogram times meters per second squared, and we can flip radians per second squared when we bring it out of the denominator. Uh, second squared cancels out, and radians have no dimensions. They're just a placeholder, so radians drop out, and we are left with kilograms times meters squared. Thank you, Bo. And thank you for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.